Chemical groups are directly involved in chemical reactions. These groups are known as functional groups. Each has certain properties, such as shape and charge, that cause it to participate in chemical reactions in its own unique way. And overall, there are seven main functional groups that you have to know. And in this video, we're going to be going over the chemical group, the compound name, examples, and a bit of its functions. So let's start off with the hydroxyl group. Now, many of you may recognize this OH over here because it looks exactly, well, almost exactly like water, just missing a hydrogen that is bonded to an oxygen. This hydroxyl group is known as an alcohol. An alcohol. And it's polar due to the electronegative oxygen. Now, many of you may think that in certain bonds, electrons are shared equally. For example, between this hydrogen and oxygen, the electron might be just right in the center. But actually, this oxygen wants the electron more than the hydrogen. So the electron is going to go move over closer to the oxygen, causing an imbalance in charge within this group. That makes it electronegative, and it allows it, the oxygen to form hydrogen bonds with water. Form hydrogen bonds with water. Additionally, it also helps dissolve compounds such as sugars. Dissolve sugars within a solution. And over here we can see a quick example of ethanol, where the hydroxyl group is on the end of the carbon skeleton. Next, let's move on to the carbonyl group. Carbonyl group is simply a carbon, which is double bound to an oxygen, and two other bonds of unspecified groups. Now this carbonyl group is interesting because, well, from what we know about oxygen, it's very electronegative, which means that the electrons are going to be pulled toward this oxygen. That increases, increases the variability to form bonds, to form bonds. What does this mean? Well, think about it like this. We know that carbon has four valence electrons. We have one, two, three, four. But since oxygen pulls those electrons more than this carbon, these electrons will move closer to the oxygen and give it more space for there to be electrons within this carbon element. When we look at certain examples, such as acetone and propanol, we can see that this increases the viability and variability of its bonds. So in this case, we have almost straight bonds within the acetone, and then we have angled bonds within the propanol. Now, interesting thing to note about this carbonyl group is that ketones are what we call this group when this carbonyl group is attached to the middle of the carbon skeleton and aldehydes aldehydes are what we call this overall molecule when this carbonyl group is attached at the end of the carbon skeleton for example this would be a ketone this acetone and ketone tone ending so we can attach it in meaning like that and this propanol would be an aldehyde because the carbonyl group is on the outside of the carbon skeleton. It's attached to the end. Next, we have the carboxyl group. Now, it's much like the carbonyl group in which we have a carbon, which is double bonded to an oxygen, but this time we have a hydroxyl group, which is attached to the carbonyl group, which is why we get the carbo from the carbonyl and the oxyl from the hydroxyl. The main function of the carboxyl group is to act as an acid, act as an acid, which means it donates hydrogen ions. It donates a positive charge. And this is because the covalent bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen is just that polar. Now the compound name is carboxylic 
acid. And we sometimes call it an organic acid. And we see over here an example of acidic acid and its ionized form, carboxylate ions, which are found in our cells. Moving on to amino groups. Now, you might also see a similarity between this amino group and NH3, or ammonia. Except here, we're missing another bond with a random group over there. Now, this, opposite to acting as an acid, actually acts as a base which means it accepts this positive charge. And it's mainly within living organisms. And most commonly, we see them within amino acids, in which it's a staple part of the amino acid structure. An interesting thing about amino acids is that they have a certain set group. We'll call this the X group. And then at the very end, they have a variable amount of different molecules, which we call the R group, that differentiates the amino acids. Within this X group, or this constant group, we always have an amino group, like glycine, which is an example of an amino acid, and actually one of the simplest ones. After amino acids, we have the sulfahydryl group, also known as the SH group. Now, an important thing to note is that actually two of these groups can interact with each other. So two can interact. And it forms a cross link which stabilizes proteins. Stabilize proteins. And within this cross link, it also can help maintain like the straightness or curliness of a hair. And in fact, in hair salons, permanent treatments break the cross link and then reform them when the hair is in this desired shape. Now, this is also known as a thiol. And you can see example in cysticine here. But it's interesting to show the importance of these groups within our everyday lives, whether it be a hair salon or within a solution in our throats. And second to last, we have the phosphate groups. Now, this is quite possibly one of the most important functional groups within this table. Because not only does it contribute a negative charge, contribute a negative charge, it also acts as a source of energy. For example, ATP, or the body's energy currency, is adenosine triphosphate because it has three of these phosphate groups. The ability to react with water and the ability to release energy makes it one of the most important groups within our body. Also known as the organic phosphate, organic phosphate, we see this all throughout our body, including glycerol phosphate, adenosine triphosphate, GTP, ATP, and much, much more. Anywhere where our body needs energy, this phosphate group is found. And lastly, we have the methyl group. Again, you might recognize this because CH4 is methane. Here, we're just missing a bond to another element. Now, the main function of this methyl group is in gene expression. Methyl groups actually attach to the DNA in order to make it so that the DNA cannot express itself. This binding affects the shape and, in other cases as well, also affects the shape and function of hormones within the female body. The main compound name is called a methylated compound. And it has a diverse set of functions but it's mainly known for its gene expression. And over here, you can see 5-methylcysteine, a component of DNA that has been modified by an addition of a methyl group, right here, which makes it so that it's not expressed. And we'll take a look into that into our gene expression activity and video, which we go over the types of gene expression, how it can be expressed, and how it can be suppressed. And now from what we've seen within these seven functional groups, We've seen its function, 
We've seen its shape and we've seen examples and how it affects our human body and really in our day-to-day -day lives. Showing the importance, the viability, and the variability between the functional groups within our body.